are welcome. Come right on in. This is Home Keepers. If you've never seen us before, please hang around a while because we have a good show for you today. And if you're brand new, welcome. Come right in. And also for those regular viewers, um, how we love you. Couldn't do it without you. And I think this is going to be a program that is extremely important. I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, I spend time in prayer before I come to the station every day and have quite a list, you know, to pray for. And recently the Lord has been just impressing me, impressing me to pray for the persecuted church around the world because he has great power, you know that. And uh, in doing so, I just sensed in my spirit that we know nothing here in America about the extent of the suffering and the brutality and the torture that's going on against our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so a series of little circumstances and steps led me to our guest today, Juliana Tamarosi, and she is the founder of the Iraq Christian Relief Council. And when you hear her story and you realize how God thoroughly prepares people for these huge jobs, uh, perhaps you've seen her on Sean Hannity's show, on uh, Greta's, and uh, thank very thankful for these people who give this ministry a platform. So I'm anxious for you to meet her. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make spinach quesadillas. Anybody not love quesadillas? I doubt it. So before I join her, though, I've got a little book for you to go along with this program, If My People Will Pray. This is so important, and this gives you a plan for prayer and it's praying for our nation like we've never needed it before. And I want you to have this, and I'll send it to you for any gift that you want to send us. The information is on your screen. Uh, as Post Office Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we will get it out to you. I have a sense that as the Lord has been dealing with me, he's been dealing with a lot of his children about the things that are going on around the world and the things that break his heart. And so I think this book will guide you, give you an appreciation for our country that was founded on good Judeo-Christian principles, and that's where we need to return for sure. So any gift that you have, we'll be glad to send it out to you. And now I've joined Sister Stephanie over here. Yes, How I am. You? I'm good. How are you doing? I already told you this, I think, but I had quesadillas on here once before, mm -hmm. and I told you who made them. Do you want to tell the folks? No. <laughs> okay. It was Diane Hagee. Diane, I couldn't remember her first name. <laughs> My Mrs. Hagee? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and what a delight she was. And uh, it's the first time I ever saw them being made, so. I make these occasionally at home. It's a good, easy, quick I dinner. I love them. Now, this is a great vegetarian meal. Mm, this is where they have this, but you can turn, put meat in it. Oh, sure. So you're gonna cut up the tomato. I have spinach. I'm just gonna put in the fan. We just wanna um, saute this down a little bit and wilt it a little bit. And I have some green onions chopped up. I have some lemon juice. I think until she fixed them, I never even ordered them like in a Mexican oh, restaurant. Oh, really? I love them. But, oh, I, I have started fixing them at home just for myself. Yeah, cumin and um, garlic salt. We're just going to saute this up. And then I have a griddle pan over here heating up. Uh-huh. Yummy. So do you want me to just, just stand, stand there and look pretty? Just, okay. You do it so yeah. well. Oh, yeah, right. Let me get the tomatoes in there. Have, have we talked about your uh, trip to the Strawberry Festival yet? No, we, we did talk about it on a show a couple weeks ago. That I was you going. You did go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, it was fun. It was packed. It was jam-packed. Next year, I'll take a, a day off during the week, I think, and go because the weekend is you just... You were there on, a, what, a Saturday? Saturday, yeah. Yeah, about a million people. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you were being hurt. I know, through, like, and I'm cows. not very good for the Chamber of Commerce because <laughs> I didn't like it. And boy, it's a big thing. Oh, it's, it's they bring in huge. the best singers, and mm -hmm. I walked out with a big flat of strawberries, so it was good. Well, <laughs> uh, I wanted some of their strawberry shortcake, which mm -hmm. it was okay. I mean, you can't do that great on the huge scale, mm -hmm. but well, I took some home and cut them up and made whipped cream and got the little mm. cakes and what, what kind of what kind of a the shortcake i like the pound cake shortcake not the biscuity oh shortcake. i like the biscuity yeah. the biscuit is the authentic mm -hmm. do you want to throw one of these on there okay so we're just going to take a tortilla mm -hmm. we're going to put some in 
Oh, wait, I got to put the cheese in. See, you're rushing me. Oh, I thought you fried these little. <laughs> oh, no, you put everything. Yeah, let me put the cheese in. See, I get to talking, and then that's it. You know, our guest today, Juliana, mm -hmm. can cook Nineveh food. Wow. She is you should have had her cook today. She is from the Middle East, and I said I've never heard of that, but I guess it's the Mediterranean. Mm. We should have had her do a recipe well, today. We'll, we'll probably have her come back and do one. That would be fabulous. But um, I think most doctors say that that Mediterranean diet is really... Overall, it's so good for you. Mm, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm taking now a tortilla, it. and I'm just going to put some of this in there. You could mix it up a little better. I'm kind of rushing here a little well, bit. Well, also, uh, you can be very creative with these. Oh, yeah, I make it with chicken at home, chicken and chicken. cheese. And then you just lay it on the griddle, and mm -hmm. we're going to brown each side. It's super, I mean, that's like, that's, like, that's, that's it. it. I mean, it's so super easy. You can put anything you inside that you want. Flip it over want. so the other side is kind of brown. Mm -hmm. And and it's delicious. It. You can serve it with salsa. Sour now Stephanie cream. has this big following on Facebook and huge. Yeah. And um, she puts recipes and things on there. Mm -hmm. And I saw on there where you said, I think it was last Friday, mm -hmm. that. You had done all your grocery shopping before you got to work? I did. At 7.30 in the morning. I, I was at the store at 7 a.m. I went to Winn-Dixie, Publix, and Sam's Club. With our little coupons. I had my lists. I had my coupons. I went home, put it away, and I made it to work by 8.10. You're a wonder woman, that's for sure. So that, but then I didn't have to deal with the crowds later on during the day. It was great. So and, these uh, need to really brown, but I'm kind of rushing yeah. here. That that is it. You want them browner than that? I like yes. them a little bit crispy. But I want you to taste it. So. Yes. Yep. So seven, eight, ten. I was done. I was grocery done with grocery shopping, and I didn't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. Here we go. There you go. Gonna I'm gonna let this one brown a little bit in. more. Well, I know I like this. I eat a lot of spinach anyway. Here you go. A little dip of sour cream. Just a <laughs> that could be on the inside too. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's good, right? Mm-hmm. The seasoning is great. And it's so easy. Put a little salsa and a little sour cream on top. I was going to say top. a little salsa. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Oh, they're good. It'd be delicious. Oh, I Super had a sweet easy. lady from Alabama call me this morning. She needed some recipes pronto. <laughs> Sweetest thing. I, we love you viewers. We really do. She's telling me her husband had Alzheimer's, and, and they go and sit on the back row of the church. And I mean, my heart was Aww. really tough. So we're going to get those recipes out. Because she wants to fix the Mexican casserole this weekend. So, that was uh, God delicious. bless you, my friend. It was great to talk to you. All right. Stay with me. I want you to meet um, my new best friend, Juliana. And um, hope you can pay a lot of attention to what she has to say. Maybe one of the most important shows we'll ever do. So, stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I think I failed to mention that those recipes are free. Just email us, write us, we'll get them out to you. Welcome, Juliana. Thank I think you. this is a, a, a God appointment. I really do, because um, uh, I'll tell you how it happened. We have a mutual friend on Facebook, yeah. and he mentioned you, and can anybody do anything? And so I messaged him and said, well, we can give her a platform, so welcome. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me on. And it's so it's such an honor to be with you, and it's such an honor to be connected to on a daily basis with so many Americans to raise awareness about what's happened to my people. Uh, I have seen you on Sean Hannity's show, and also Greta Van Susteren, and she really has a heart for the hurting, doesn't she? She does. I've been on Hannity Radio mm -hmm. uh, a few times, and on uh, Greta Van Susteren's show, absolutely, and they both are. Uh, so fiery about this cause, and mm -hmm. uh, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. This this cause needs that. Yeah, I want people to know you so that they really understand how God prepares people. 
Uh, you were born in Iran, right? Yes. Okay, take it from there. Give us, our, give us your story. I want to sure, hear it. Sure, absolutely. I'm an Assyrian Christian, a uh, cradle Christian. I was baptized as a Catholic. And we, prior to 1979, we had religious freedom. We were able to practice our faith uh, without any fear. We would go to church. We didn't have any spies inside the church. Excuse me, was that when the Shah was there? Yes, exactly. Do you remember when he left? Well, I was six years old when he was toppled. And I remember when... Did uh, America topple him? The Iranian community believes that Carter had a lot to do mm -hmm. with it. Well, that's Absolutely. the way I read history. Yes. Because it was a whole different country, wasn't it? Absolutely. We um, were free. We were free on so many levels. We were westernized. Uh, women had many rights. We were being able to, we were able to get educated. And when uh, he left, when he was sent into exile, I remember it was uh, winter. And my mother and I, I was six years old at the time, and my mother and I s went outside because of these jubilant uh, protesters walking by and dancing on the streets and singing. And my mom was crying. And I will never forget, there was a man that stared at her. And he approached her and he said, you dirty Christian, you watch what we will do to you now because your father, your protector is now gone. And at the time, as a kid, as a child, I was terrified that this man came, threatened my mother and threatened Christianity as a whole. But I couldn't understand it fully. And as I grew older, when I started going to public schools, Islamic public, public schools, when I was made fun of for my faith, I started understanding how much more freedom we had under the Shah, and now we didn't have anything left. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you were actually smuggled yes. out of the country. Could you not have just walked away, just left? I couldn't. I was under the age of 30. I was unmarried. What about your parents? My parents were free to go. Um, but if, they, if the government knew that we were selling our belongings and our home and that we were going to evacuate and leave the country each, you know, all together, uh, that would have been frowned upon. Um, so we told uh, our neighbors that we're selling our belongings because we're building a home outside Tehran. I was born in Tehran and we lived there. Uh, and yet we had paid a smuggler. We had met with so many smugglers to find the right one to get us, get me out of the country. And we lived in intercontinental hotel in Tehran for six months. Arveline, imagine. I wasn't going to school because people thought, well, she's, gonna, she's going to another school closer to her would-be home. Um, so I wasn't going to school for six months. My parents and I were living in one room for six months out of suitcases, really like refugees. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't know at the time was what I was going through then is going to completely come in preparing me for this ministry that I have today helping the displaced. And I was displaced in mm -hmm. my own country at the time. We found the right smuggler and uh, I was smuggled to Switzerland, smuggled again to Germany, and then came to the States as a refugee in 1990. Is there a lot of money involved in this kind of smuggling? Yes, my father paid $25,000 to uh, set me free, technically, from oh Iran. my word. Yes. And how many languages do you speak? I speak Aramaic. That's my mother's language. Um, tongue, mother's you speak tongue. very good English. Thank you. <laughs> I was 17 when I came. Uh, I tried very hard to, to lose the accent. A lot, of ref a lot of immigrants come in and they want to become Americans and speak like Americans, but then I came, um, came in terms that I'll always have this accent, but thank you for that. So mm -hmm. I speak uh, Persian, Farsi as well. Um, and I grew up in a family that spoke Russian, read and write, wrote Russians as well, Russian. And I'll tell you why uh, later on, how my parents ended up in Russia and how, how I ended up being born in Iran. It's, that's the plight of my people, the Assyrian nation. We're on the run all the time. So in the f And how far the back in history is that true? From the rise Always of Islam. Running. We've been massacred since the rise of Islam, and what you see today ISIS doing to the minorities in Iraq and Syria is exactly what we went through for 1,400 years. If you just tuned in, i um, talking to Juliana Tamarosi, and she is the founder of the Iraqi Christian Relief Organization, and we're going to put that website up and leave it up, and you can go on there, and maybe you've asked the Lord, what can I do? Well, number one, you can pray. But also you can donate because you're going to learn that they, they are really reaching these people who have been displaced, they're refu refugees, their churches have been burned to the ground, they've been run out of their homes, uh, 
hoping to just maintain their life. And uh, this is something that a lot of Americans know nothing about. The White House is saying nothing about it. And so I believe with all my heart that God sent Juliana here so that our viewers could know about this because I know how homekeepers have a heart for this kind of thing because we have children and we have grandchildren and uh, that just that heart of a mother and uh, the children that are really suffering and this is something you can do. So the website is up and uh, I hope you'll write it down and you'll go there, you'll pray for them and you can, you can uh, donate there. It's just the the basics you know they, they need shoes and they need coats and it's very cold over there absolutely in winter time a lot of people look at iraq as a whole as a desert and yet the assyrians who are displaced today there are in the northern part in the kurdistan region and yes they are living in camps in uh, community centers and schools and churches when they fled when isis attacked in the summertime they fled with the clothes on their back and now they need winter clothing they need blankets, they need mattresses, and we've been on the ground. In fact, Arthelene, I've been doing this for, for seven years. Uh, we founded the organization seven years ago. And I can't tell you how many doors have been closed to our faces until June, July of 2014 when ISIS attacked. I believe that's when the Christian world woke up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's still silent, it's still silent. But uh, that's when uh, a lot of uh, donations started coming in, a lot of prayers had been have been sent to us and we've been overwhelmed truly. and the, the media is not helping you all that much either not at all uh, because uh, everybody knows that America has given to everybody yes America has just fed the hungry and they've yes. clothed the poor and they've welcomed uh, people and, and I'm one of them look at all the wars we've won for other people uh, absolutely and I have to tell you a very cute story when my mom uh, was sent to Iran from Russia they were born in Russia uh, when she came to Iran, there was an American priest that came in, and he picked her out of the line in school. She was six, seven, eight years old, and he gave her a pen, a golden pen, and also paid for her entire schooling from whatever age she was in, seven, eight years old, till high school. And my mom, that was the impression my mother has always had, that the Americans are the most giving people, the most they loving are. people. And we see that today. As the platforms such as yours mm -hmm. and Hannity and uh, Greta's come to us and Americans learn about this, they welcome us with open arms. And I'm truly humbled and I'm truly grateful in advance for the generosity that will be shown to this through this platform. I, I pray it will. We have some pictures and uh, we're going to show you a few of the devastation and then we'll show a few of um, some of the work, you know, when your uh, organization goes in there. So if you want to explain them to us, um, Yes, the, uh, looks like the, just a tent that somebody's thrown up real quickly. This, exactly. This is what they're living in. Um, they are warming that tent with open flame kerosene. And a lot of tents have gone up in flames Absolutely. and people have been burnt. Yeah. Uh, these are individuals that have homes, that <laughs> have had you know cars and stores, and they've lost everything. Yeah. So that, is, that tent holds a family of five, six, at times ten people. Living and I, I'm sure some of the ministry, I know Franklin Graham is... Uh, his uh, his organization Samaritan's is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Samaritan's Purse. Uh, do we have some work. others? And that, that looks like a, ch is that a church That is pew? a church. That's a church view. There Those are children, yeah. You see that? This is when, this is in July and August of, uh, in the summer in 2014. And this is how they were living. Imagine, I want your mm. viewers to put themselves in these people's mm -hmm. shoes, that they've overnight, their entire life has been overhauled, and they had to escape on foot and now that is what they call home. They just leave with their clothes. Exactly. Exactly. Look at those children. precious Look at that children, child. mother. That child, there, was, there have been so many kids that have been born mm -hmm. uh, in these camps and it's devastating. I don't understand mm -hmm. why human rights organizations are quiet. Women's rights organizations are yeah. quiet. And well, the they church. pick and choose who they exactly <laughs> endorse. Exactly, that woman's eyes really? have haunted me. That Old look lady. in her eyes. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. You know, it's one thing when we see kids being devastated. It's mm -hmm. another when I see an older woman because I know she has suffered decade after decade in the hands of Muslim extremists. Um, there are four million of us left in the world, and every one of us has a story to tell. That woman. What is her sin? That she, what is her guilt that she has to live like that and potentially die yes. on a mattress away from her home? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
as, as I have become aware of your story, you uh, were volunteering or something with some Catholic nuns in Chicago. As, uh, Catholic Charities. I was, vo I was volunteering for yeah, Catholic for, Charities. Uh, refugee yes. women from Iraq. Now, who brings them to the United States? How did they get here? Resettlement agencies, like Catholic Charities, like uh, Refugee One, they bring them here. Uh, but I have to tell you, the ratio of Muslims coming from Syria and Iraq and Jordan is vastly different than Christians. The, the number of Christians coming to America is very, very low compared to Muslims being led in the country. And when they come here, they're placed many times in such homes that are roach infested, rat infested, and these people had been promised really nice housing, nice cars, and you know education. And they come in and they're culturally shocked. Number one, they're culturally shocked. Number two, um, they are living in these homes that are not very clean. And um, the trauma is what continues in these people's minds. I, I wrote an article called When the Lights Go Off um, and the Dust Settles. What I talk about there is it's one thing when sensational news is spread, that there's a church bombing or there's a beheading. What continues is the trauma that the, fam the remainders, the family members mm -hmm. have to live with. And that's what I want people to pray for, for healing of their s souls and their emotions, their broken hearts. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, we do have some pictures of some of your work. Uh, let's, let's take a look at that and we can see uh, it's vastly different now. That's help coming, right? Yes. That truck? Yes. Uh, this is uh, an aid that we sent to, there are two organizations on the ground we work with. The Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena in the northern part of Iraq, also the Assyrian Aid Society. This is a truck that was given to the nuns. These uh, uh, space heaters were uh, delivered to these refugees by the Assyrian Aid God Society. God bless them. Oh yes. my. Yes, it's amazing the work that they it's do. It's just beautiful to see it. The people that have gone there, this is Baghdad. We sent money to Baghdad and these kids, uh, this is Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, because there were about a hundred families who helped. escaped from Mosul. And these are Assyrian groups that are helping the children. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is an image that will forever be etched in my mind. Uh -huh. These are everything that you see on this child and other kids, there are about 58 kids. Their clothing, their gifts were provided by our organization. This is also Baghdad. Um, you know, it's one thing when kids smile. It's another when parents, older people smile and... That made the parents smile. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That w the Lord graced us to play Santa mm -hmm. in Baghdad. Well, uh, there's a lot more pictures on that website. I would suggest that you, uh, that you uh, check it out because... The scripture is so plain that when you do this, you're doing it to, for Jesus. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah. I was thirsty and yes. I was hungry yes. and you came. Yes. Now, um, you host a program called uh, on Nineveh Radio? I used to. Yeah, uh, what is that? Nineveh Radio uh, was an Assyrian radio and we would bring in uh, either persecuted people that we would give them a platform to bear witness, or we would uh, inter uh, interview bishops and priests about their feeling about Nineveh as a whole, what is their vision for our nation. Uh, that was a couple of years ago, but the Lord has blessed me. In fact, before I came to Florida, uh, a Catholic organization in Chicago has offered me a platform for me to have my own radio. We haven't really discussed the details, but that's been um, in the works. However, I have to tell you about something very exciting. I'm an executive director for a movie called Sing a Little Louder. This is a 30, uh, 10 minute, a 10 minute video that talks about Nazi era, about the real life story of this young man, young boy, that uh, in church, uh, trains packed with Jews and others were going to their death camps and churches in Germany would sing literally louder to drown out the cries of the Jews. We combine that, we link that to how our churches are singing louder through their choirs and drowning out the cries of the Assyrians in Iraq and Syria. And this movie has been released. It's going to be, we can screen it in churches. So if people want me to come out and speak about this plight, we have a 45 minute presentation that we give. We show pictures of what has happened. We give historical background. And a lot of churches are um, asking us to do so. 
but we also screen the movie. If you want to know more about this movie, it's called the website is called singloudermovie.com. That is so that powerful. In fact, we are so excited because Congressman Wolf of Virginia just endorsed the movie, and he quoted, he gave us a quote that we can use. But Wilb he and he founded the 21st Century Wilberforce Initiative. Uh, which is so needed and you know Congressman Wolf has been a champion of religious liberty th for the entire time that he was in Congress and beyond now that he ha he's with Wilberforce. As you look through the prism of your own life, yes. what do you see happening in America? We're, we're going down the same path. My God, Arthelene, I'm devastated for this country, for my country. This is my home. This is where I live. When I came 25 years ago, this is not what America was. Mm. Even then, just 25 years ago. So I can imagine people who have lived here for all their lives, mm. how they see this change. Uh, it's very different. We are becoming more and more politically correct. We are walking away from family. We are walking away from God, from the church. The churches are empty, you know, a lot of them. And it breaks my heart. Uh, and also, the fact that we ignore what is happening across the pond mm -hmm. in the Middle East. We, can, we should not ignore that because as a crazy Islamist extremist blow himself, blows himself up, that can happen here. So when we're in the church, I want us to pray for those individuals and also pray for this country and really appreciate the religious freedom that we still have, but it's completely it's under attack. It's under attack and it's slipping away. Yes. Uh, and we need leadership. Like you said, they're singing louder. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. We need leadership in Congress that is passionate about this. We need leadership that understands the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and why we as an America, as an America, as the country of America were formed. And we need to teach our kids that is the issue that is missing, I see. Um, families, parents are not taking their time to teach the kids fundamental of Christianity. And we don't, if we don't know our faith, how can we defend it? Look at Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. Muslims teach their kids and in indoctrinate them as young children. Mm. How can our young men and women go against that when we don't know our faith that well? Well, we are, we are out of time, but she's going to be back. So uh, <laughs> uh, we will uh, have a whole lot more information for you when she comes back. We need to talk about the Judeo-Christians getting together on this. Uh, and what about the so-called moderate Muslims? And there's endless uh, information that we need to get out on this subject. So uh, she will be back, but hope you'll join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers. 